Hello there, I'm Rafael Di Furia, back at it again for another episode of Not Your Average Globetrotter. And this week I am joined by two special guests, Silvia Cajaya and Carlos Rodriguez. In this episode, we are going to be talking about some of their perspectives as Portuguese individuals who've spent quite a bit of time abroad, but have decided that coming back and living in their own country was the right choice for them. I was curious about a lot of different topics, everything from cost of living to opportunities here, as well as their perspectives on life here versus life abroad. And in this episode, episode, we touched on just about every topic, but unfortunately it was not possible to include everything in this episode. So what I've done is I've uploaded this main video here so that you can watch some of the highlights from the episode and you'll be able to hear some of my favorite parts of this episode. But then in the comment section below this video or in the, the, the more info section, I'll also include a special link to an unlisted video where you can see the full version of this podcast. And in the full length episode, you will get to hear more about them from themselves, as well as about what they do individually. Sylvia has a business here in Braga. Well, actually a couple businesses, one where she does a bit more on, focused on the marketing side of things. And then another where she uh, is involved in the textile industry, taking materials that would have otherwise just gone to waste and putting them to a purpose and making them into different products. And then Carlos happens to be a real estate agent based here in Braga as well. They both have very interesting stories and very interesting takes on life in Portugal and abroad. But I think it's about time that we get this episode started. So roll that intro. Portugal as itself is a very small country with 10 million inhabitants um, with what is it like a 800,000, 900,000 foreign residents in Portugal, something like registered, this. Yeah. Registered. <laughs> that's, <laughs> Sorry. That's, that's a good that's point. A good point right? <laughs> that's a very good point. Probably <clears throat> you know, it definitely <throat> could be much higher than that, but we'll say registered mm -hmm. um, in such a small country. So what one in one in 11 people roughly is not from here. Do you see this as, I mean, I think I, I see Sylvia where you're going to go. So I'm going to save this question for a moment, but Carlos, do you see this as, a positive net effect on the country? Or do you feel as though that there's anything that Portugal ends up losing by having so many non-Portuguese non here? Like for example, culture or language or influence on society. Okay, um, I have a personal opinion about that. I live, for example, in Toronto, one of the most multicultural cities in the world. Right. Every, every culture is there, Yeah. period. So I'm used to it. Mm -hmm. Okay, in my perspective, in Portugal, bringing uh, coming new residents from other cultures for me is extremely positive because we can learn from each other. So sometimes you don't need to to travel to learn another culture, so to speak. So, but I have one thing that I I welcome everybody since that that persons contribute for on the social and economical sense of it if it's not for the good contribute for a social or, or economical please don't come because everywhere you have good residents mm -hmm. not so good residents all right and sometimes we see it Okay, that's my perspective. That's my everyone. I, I would share that perspective. I, everyone are, are welcome. Mm. The question is, don't come here to be a bad guy. Don't do it. Don't come. Stay in your country. That's my perspective. I'm being honest. I'm be very transparent. And I appreciate that. I think it's important to 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 be able to share that because I think there's a lot of people who. And sorry to interrupt you here. That that come to a country and they say, "Oh, well, I'm not in my own home. I can just go." have fun, go crazy, I, that they don't have to respect the system. And I think that's one of the most important things when you are a guest is to respect where you are. Exactly. One of the things is when I travel to a country, it doesn't matter if it's one week, two weeks, could be, for example, I spent in 2014, I spent one month in Dubai. I need to respect the environment mm -hmm. and the laws, mm -hmm. yeah. culture-wise. Mm -hmm. Yeah was very was was a great experience but the question is i need to respect culture wise my dad used to say okay as long as you live under my roof these are my rules and that's it yeah yeah that's it that's basically it and i, I do agree with carlos um answer in the sense like 
if you're coming to a country, okay, let's talk about Portugal. Uh, if you're not going to, we have our own rules. Mm -hmm. We have common rules with the European Union, but we have our own rules. We have yeah. our own way of doing things, uh, local rules as well. If you're not coming with the mindset to respect that, and if you're trying to impose your rules into ours, then just don't bother to buy the ticket yeah. or cross whatever country you want to cross to get to ours. Because, I mean, that's not right. Then just stay. Because you can't just come here, impose your language, impose your, your I'm talking impose, that's the key word. <laughs> because one thing is for you to show that you live in a different way. Mm -hmm. And you can actually get some inputs from there. Mm -hmm. either food, even religion, politics, whatever. But when you try to impose that and say, oh, this is how I live and this is just another territory where I'm yeah. going to do it. No. It's, it's like a brand. Yeah. It's like a brand, um, if we're talking about marketing issues, right? right? It's like, okay, we have a territorial brand. There's an authenticity to it. And that's our, you know, how you look at us. Right. As, and um, you should respect that. Otherwise, it will become something else. The and Algarve. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I hate to say it, but like... You know, when I went to Italy and um, the first time I met this, this friend of mine <laughs> at work, and I was trying to speak Italian like from day one, but of course the first month was a bit of English and Italian, and she came to me so nice and she said oh you portuguese i've been to portugal once and i said where did you go to the algarve and immediately i wow. said like immediately i said that's not portuguese <laughs> and she said like okay and you know i felt bad because i felt like i was impolite you know right. like like i'll explain you why you know mm. um i mean things have changed a bit yeah because like 30 years ago you would go into a restaurant and the menu was not in portuguese mm -hmm. And if you would ask for the menu in Portuguese, they would say, we don't have it because mm. they thought Portuguese don't have the money for us. Yeah. Mm. Uh, luckily, I mean, uh, because people started to, you know, making a fuss out of it, and rightfully so, um, they were obliged to. But still, me, uh, when I go there, I try to go to an inner, inner Algarve because there are beautiful yeah. places in the Algarve, you mm. know, without some of nationalities in there because there are some yeah. other nationalities that make it a different way yeah. but well yeah. i mean even depending on where you are exactly. in the Algarve, For like, instance, uh, like lagos at least years ago it was much more british now it's starting to become a little bit more american well, and even you're not uh, going to Albu mention albufeira right just forget about it oh that's uh, albufeira Al but that to me is also that starts to become like even more german and dutch by the time you're there but even then it's not a real okay i don't i don't you don't want to say it's a not a real Sanso city Algarve in Albufeira, sorry no it's its own no. place it's its own world it's like a like a yeah. part i mean a lot of the algarve unfortunately is a party area but like once you get outside of some of the main cities mm -hmm. and the main centers like even going okay it's a little bit touristy but my, one of my favorite places of all time is monchic just mm -hmm. you're up in the mountains yeah that's nice but air. also for instance i love tavira and that kind of yeah. that area over there because you, you actually get the locals you're able to interact with them and if just move a bit away from the coast you, you yeah. see the real thing yeah. um but you know what that's the experience because most of the portuguese don't even bother also to do that right they just want to take one week 10 days lying on the beach of course everyone has a different way to spend relax their of course <laughs> you relax yeah, of yeah, course yeah. But that's the standard, that kind of picture for me. I'm not like that. I prefer to spend so far. Why not spend, go to, to Jerez, spend mm -hmm. a week in Jerez, mm -hmm. mm. going to Alentejo. Alentejo is beautiful. Yeah. So much. Super underrated. Exact. Yes. Because most of the people, before they, before they have the highway to Algarve, usually people go to the national road. Okay. Can I, uh, the Alentejo is the place that you drive through to get to yes, the oh, exactly. yes. the it's, way to get there. It's the way through. <laughs> yeah. But the real Alentejo, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. And the coast is just breathtaking. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, spending uh, uh, it's a quality of time. Going to Algarve, to be honest, I went to Algarve last year. It was 20 years ago, the time, the last time I went there. Wow. So I didn't miss nothing about Algarve, to be honest. There's beautiful places in, in Portugal that... It's, I mean, honestly, the coastline in the Algarve, absolutely out of this world. Like, sorry to interrupt you again, but... There's a place now, it's very well known. It's not... It's becoming a very expensive place. It's Comporta. Going to Comporta right now, 
You don't see many Portuguese there. No. It's only yeah. foreigners. Foreigners, yeah. Really? It's getting so busy mm. and restaurants and so what. I don't know. Comporto was a, was a very natural and it was a natural reserve. It still is, but the question is, it's very getting very crowded. It's missing the beauty that it has before had before. I don't know what this because of Madonna was came came here. I don't know. Well, she has a she has a, a little bit of a reputation Philip of traveling Stark. to a place in Philip, yeah, Stark. Started, yeah. Philip Stark is also there that oh. also has a house there and some others. Because it's so close, but you also have a Habida which is absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Um so it's like I said before, you have so many different landscapes in a such a tiny country like ours, and you have so much to learn outside of the I mean the beach part like you have the museums you have such nice places to actually get to know the smaller villages you know interacting with with people that with the traditions with how the things were done before and all that for instance when 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 i go to the algarve to the area the, like the area tavira cabanas tavira i normally come up okay i take the highway down but when i come up i took, take normally like two days and i come either through the coast or through, through the interior, and uh, I just like to drive. Well, I love driving, so that's fine. But, you know, I just go like, okay, let's do it. And my daughter goes like, oh, that she goes to <laughs> Can we just go? <laughs> like, last year, I, I, we went to this place, Mertula. Oh, okay. Have you been to Martla? Yeah. Nice. So <laughs> I felt like, oh, we have to stop here and get to, to eat some migas, which I love. And I was like, oh, we have to stay there. You know, the moment I opened the door, I said like, oh, God. It was like 42 degrees in the Alentejo. And I told them like, okay, let's go out and get to know this Moorish influence and all that. And they opened they got the door and it was her and, her and a friend of hers. And they said, she said, can we stay in the car? <laughs> nope. <laughs> we have to go out. Yeah, 42 degrees. Is like, yeah. I, but also in Fahrenheit, that's like, I, I can't turn, convert over the top of my head right now, but it's like well over 100 degrees. It is. Yeah. It's, um, but you know what? We got to know, we, we went to this really nice shop. We got to know this couple. They used to be immigrants in, uh, in England. We spent like two hours speaking to them, you know, and speaking to them about the experience. Why open a shop here? You know, when you lived in London, why bring your kids? So there was all this talk. And then my daughter was really happy, you know, to participate and get to know this, this thing, this experience, like why and get to know it. Okay. I stopped there, never been there, ended up in that store. And that person was linked to a social area and they lived in England. And it was such an enriching experience because you're open to it. You know, you're just open to it. Because if you were like a typical, like, Portuguese, you're just, okay, you, you, you just sit there, you eat your stuff, okay, you drink your whatever, and let's go. I've been to Mertola. I can't do that. I, I like to get to know the people and, and um, who li lives there, you know, and trying to get some rich experience from there because um, that makes me a better person. I know that. And a richer person. And but that brings uh, another question. It's something I'm I'm kind of miss when I was abroad. Uh, my experiences uh, in Canada and other countries, cities I visit, it's it's missing a little bit of the part of networking. What Sylvie is saying is about okay, it's normal. Someone start talking about anything. I mean, the coffee shop, a restaurant, start talking. In Portugal. Culture-wise, that is not happening naturally between, generally speaking, the Portuguese. I'm not saying all of them, but generally speaking, the Portuguese don't have that sense of networking when starting talking with someone they don't know. I'm going to, this is maybe, I don't, I don't want this to be an uncomfortable question, but could this be any type of remnant from the era, the Salazar era, where people actually had to be careful about what they said. I mean, I, I don't know if that's stepping a little too far, but it's something I'm genuinely curious about. I don't know. It's something... It, Culture-wise, the Portuguese are defensive. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you agree with that. Kind of. <laughs> Sylvia, you can... She's you not can, denying you, it. You, you can say <laughs> your opinion. The Portuguese... Thank you. <laughs> that's very nice of you. <laughs> You're very welcome. Uh, <laughs> Culture-wise, people, the Portuguese are very defensive. It doesn't matter if they are in Portugal or in other countries. Hmm. 
because I I visited and knew people from another uh, Portuguese communities in another country, cities. It's a, it's a challenge, to be honest. Hmm. It's very challenging. But to understand what you're saying a little bit better, just are you saying more in a sense that when it comes to networking, like through organic kind of meetings that you're going into a store or that you're talking to someone on the street or some type of general everyday interaction, that's where this networking aspect doesn't really come into play as much? Or maybe I'm misunderstanding you. Basically, what, what I'm just mentioning about the networking, when I call networking, it's in a, could be on a day-to-day basis on anywhere. All right. Okay. It's not easy. It's not easy. It's a challenge. I'm not saying all of the of the, of the of the Portuguese. I'm not saying that, but cultural wise, because I ch- saw that, that when I came from Canada, it's very easy. If I'm in a coffee shop anywhere on the gas station, whatever, I can start with talking with somebody, exchange contacts. Period. Pure networking. Doesn't matter who, how, when it happens naturally, because it's it's, it's a very competitive environment in Portugal. Even if you are in Lisbon or in Porto, that could be a barrier. It probably will be more easier on these big, big uh, environments like uh, these cities. But probably on a young age, because if you go to a, like probably age uh, my generation, for example, it's not so easy to get into start a conversation from nothing. It's not easy. I had that experience because I had that that uh, experience when I came from Canada, because it was very easy, I start, it starts talking with somebody and the people just start, well, what do you want from me? It's like that. I don't know how, and we explain if it's something related with the, the previous regime that we had until 74. I, I'm not a, a sociologist, but probably somehow, for, for example, my parents, mm, are not so easy, for example, start talking with, with them or them to talk with somebody else that they don't know. Hmm. Sorry, will not happen. And generation of my parents, will, that will not happen at all. It's a little bit quite different. For instance, I was joking about this. Well, not joking about Lisbon, but, you know, I lived there as a northern girl, okay? Right. I lived there and... Um, I go there every month. I love Lisbon. I absolutely love Lisbon, but I wouldn't be able to live in Lisbon now. Mm. Okay, because it's so, the human part is coming out. I mean, you're not able to interact with people. I normally have lunch with four or five people that used to go to me, with me to college. We normally have lunch together when I go there <laughs> because they live and they work very close to each other and they never get together. They say, you're the glue. Mm. So whenever I go there, like one week before, I say, I'm going, anybody for lunch? And they go like, oh, the Bracarense is coming down. Let's go for lunch. Huh. But like, that's the, the demonym of someone from Braga, just by the way. It's interesting, right? Yeah. So, and for instance, I remember one day I was in a, in a, in a place in, uh, in Lisbon, so shopping in Moreiras. And I went in the elevator and there were people in there uh, with, with, with a friend of mine. Mm. Uh, and I said, bon dia, which is normal. Okay, you go into a place, you have of people, course. you say bon dia. Nobody answered. Really? So my friend immediately saw <laughs> my, my body language and said, don't. <laughs> and I just... just shut up. Yeah, but I didn't. <laughs> so I just said, <clears throat> must be my northern accent. I'll say it again, bon dia. And immediately they understood and they replied. Really? So my friend said, oh, sh-. <laughs> I, I do that all the time. I just hate it. I just think it's... I hate when I say good morning. Uh-huh. People don't respond. Don't answer, yeah. Really? <laughs> that already happened here in Braga. But well. it also but happens, But not yeah. with Portuguese people. Okay. Uh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, I think this gets also into an interesting aspect of life in Portugal is that even though it's a small country, kind of like what you were saying before, there's different people in different mm-hmm. places, cultures. different cultures. Yeah. yeah, that's huge. And that was something that 
I only understood could exist after living in really Italy that that because of how these countries have survived for so many years and people haven't had necessarily the same mobility like people coming to America where it's like all right everybody's just arriving now mm -hmm. so it's like we're all kind of on a similar page within a hundred years or so but in many places in Europe and Portugal and very much Italy also that the place where you're from has a lot of defining factors of the way you speak, the way you act, the way you interact with people, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and, and to your how beliefs. Open, how open you are. For example, what I find here in Braga, uh, since I, I came here in my early 20s, is the people are more open, open to, are more friendly Just than in, down in south. I'm not saying specifically yeah. Lisbon, because Lisbon has yeah. people from everywhere. Yeah, yeah it's true. Yeah, yeah. It's so, true. It, you don't have, I don't know, you have a, probably a few natural uh, Alpha Singers. Alpha Singers, Lisbon born. I was born in Lisbon because I was born, I went there, my mother, she went there to, uh, for me to, to give birth to, to get birth, that's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So, but I'm from Lisbon. Anyway, probably Lisbon is not a good example, but if you go surrounding Lisbon, probably south of Lisbon, west or north, People are not so open, to be honest. I'm talking about uh, city, no, and I've cities seen that. with like also, I've seen that 50, in, people yeah. or, or 30, people. There's not not small cities, yeah. and people are more closed. It's got to do with the food, also. I think. Really, I don't know. To be honest, I'm, I'm, but I've, I've I, noticed I, I, that. I in think Moscow. so because you know. Um, I, don't want to, I, I cannot explain this, to be honest. Yeah, but you know what? For instance, I remember my grandmother. Okay, I went to Lisbon, right? And I would come here like every month, sometimes every two months, okay? And every time I would come up doing a hard sell in Braga and Jerez, I would bring a different friend <laughs> that never been to Braga, so I would always bring somebody. And the only thing my grandmother used to say was, if he eats, you bring it. If he doesn't eat, just leave him be. Yeah, interesting. So I, I brought a friend once. <laughs> She didn't like risois, she didn't like this, she didn't like that. <laughs> so my grandmother, like after the first day, she just came to my ear and she said, this one is not coming back. <laughs> you know what? One of the things, and you can confirm this because it's from Braga. Mm -hmm. If you're not good to eat, you're yeah. not good to, to work. work. Oh, that's an interesting yeah. one. I've never heard that. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's true. Wow. It's true. It's not good to eat, it's not good to work. It's true. That's that's. But because it's, you know yeah. what, for me, and I'm a very northern, well, per, woman probably in that sense. Like I love, I love cooking, uh -huh. and I love cooking for others because I think it's an ultimate gesture of caring. You know, um, and for us to be able to, you know, get people in, either if you're cooking Portuguese food like I do, or a lot of Italian like I do as well. But you know, it's just a, a, a thing of like, you're welcome to my place. Mm -hmm. You're welcome to my table. You know, mm -hmm. if you have the table for me as the net, the ultimate networking place, yeah. that's why there's no phones in my table ever. So if you ever come to my place, I'll say, those are the phone. that's <laughs> where you put the phone. Because that's that's the thing. I mean, you you, you have that at your, as a place to you know get to know the others, yeah. talk about things. The networking place, yeah. either personal or professional, yeah. and we still keep that. Me, my sister, my brother, my sister-in-law. Not that I'm talking about loud it makes all the sense. Yes. But one of the things. <laughs> sorry to interrupt you, Sylvia. I believe you were, because about the networking thing. About probably from your background, when you, your grandmother and your the place you lived and mm -hmm. so on, and also you you travel abroad mm -hmm. when you are young as well, and you live as well in other countries. Like myself, probably you travel more than me. It doesn't matter the quantity. The mm -hmm. question is, we have experience from other places, sure. so we have more like an open mind. Mm -hmm. Let's say, mm -hmm. okay. For the first, isn't it, it's normal to, to network, period. Yeah. So it's a natural thing. Right. I'm, we, I'm a product of my networking. Yeah. That's what I, t what, what I tell my, grand, my, my daughter is I'm a product of networking. Well, they do say this, like, what is it? The, 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 the people who you spend the most time around with are the ones that are most influential yeah. in your life and you become most like. But actually, even getting back to the point that you were making about the, the way that people are towards each other, even in Lisbon, like even as an outsider that has some grasp of the language, 
I've noticed not only just, of course, the differences between the accents, that's of course big, but the word choices that people make and what topics they'll actually talk to you about if you're just getting in conversation. I have had some some conversations with just random people, like store owners and so on in, in, in Lisbon, but I noticed the word choice specifically was one of the biggest things about how willing to go into a subject that they were or what kind of words in 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 braga in the north i've noticed a lot more of a direct way of speaking mm -hmm. about topics whereas in lisbon i've almost noticed it to be almost like a little bit more californian where like, like you're talking around, you around the topic. The subject. Yeah. <laughs> people here in braga go straight forward to the yeah, point, like period. waste that, no time just go you know straight what? into it that's the one the thing i love in braga is mm -hmm. people are straight yeah, and transparent. No BS. Period. Yeah, no bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, well. <laughs> right. well, now you were more braga than me. <laughs> Come on. I was trying to be polite. <laughs> No, no, I, I, I have freedom to say these words, okay? <laughs> because I'm in Braga. And another thing that I feel like is the touching. I think we in the north, we like, you know, I'm talking to you and I go this. Yeah. For me, it's fine. It's just normal, you yeah, know. It's just. Yeah. It, you, yeah, it's okay. Um, where is over there? Uh, when if you, you touch, go, oh my God. It's like, yeah. what, what you want? Like, do I know you yeah. from somewhere? Yeah, I mean, have that, you that been somewhere? Space, that exactly here you, you know that's why it's so important for instance going back to that um, volunteer project is kids get to know that you know that uh -huh. even here it's different if you the way you interact people yeah, because yeah. for us i mean i've met you once or twice for me it's fine you know if i give you a hug or two kisses yeah, yeah, like yeah. we do or how oh, how are you blah 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 for yeah. me it's perfectly fine yeah, yeah. but uh sometimes i need to be very because I, and especially having lived in italy you know like <laughs> <laughs> so whenever i go to lisbon for instance we're in a restaurant with these friends of mine having lunch you can see you speaks right <laughs> and i was like all the time and they go like shh sylvia like and i go like Shh, what <laughs> you know like yeah, you know because it's so <sighs> yeah much more quiet yeah. uh, otherwise it's going to be yeah. um i don't know like uh, yeah, she's catalog, making, she's making a fuss yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Huh. And I, it gives me a lot of fun because, you know, for me, Lisbon is just, okay, a big city in Portugal, but a very small city compared to the ones I've lived in. <laughs> so it just gives me a lot of fun sometimes to just make fun of this kind yeah. of stuff, yeah. you know, yeah. and go like, come on, guys, grow up. I've been around, <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> it's an interesting perspective. Just, uh, it's interesting. I mean, once again, going out, to be able to compare, to yeah. be able to get it in. And once again, why I am a firm believer that, you know, uh, Erasmus should be mandatory. But actually, this is one of the reasons why I wanted to bring you guys on is because you have had that experience both in Portugal mm -hmm. and abroad in different parts of Portugal as well as because mm -hmm. when you have that ability to look outside, you can also start looking inside, but mm -hmm. the inside helps you realize yes. what's on the outside. I, I just, one last thing before we finish off, of course, we've talked for about two hours now <laughs> to figure out how this episode is going out but that's a that's a the problem for later me but maybe to really introduce people to you and let mm -hmm. them know a little bit about you of course we'll go ladies first because <laughs> <So nice. laughs> uh you both have uh, these lives that you we've heard little bits and pieces of but who are you and what do you do okay so i'm sylvia i'm portuguese born and raised in braga uh, my most important role for the past 18 years is being a mom. So that guides me through a lot of things that I do. In terms of um, professional, but also personal way, I'm, the way to better define me is like uh, I'm an economist by training. Uh, I'm a marketeer by, because of passion. And um, by heart, I'm a social entrepreneur. So for me, everything is about people and it's about the positive impact that you can leave on the people that actually surround you being, you know, next of kings or others, but uh, just leave a better place for others to live in, and especially my daughter. That's what moves me. <laughs> Very cool. And Carlos, could you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Okay, my name is Carlos. I was born and raised in Cadaval until uh, I just traveled to, to Lisbon just to have my degree in electrical engineering. Um, so that's by training. So I never, I, I didn't practice much the electrical engineering side because I was more always related to on the commercial side and business development. 
So, like I said before, I was 13 years in Canada, in Toronto. So I spent also about 20 months in Luanda, Angola as well, wow. as, a, as a business, as a consultant as well. I have another experience of six months in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And um, so right now I work as a real uh, as a real estate agent. Thank you so much for coming to check out this episode of Not Your Average Globetrotter, where we talked with Carlos and Silvia. If you would like to know more information about them or even find them online, you can find their info in the more info section below or in the show notes on your favorite podcasting player of choice, if that's where you happen to be listening to this episode. And with all that said, a quick thanks to those of you who helped to make these episodes possible through Patreon, the one-time donations, and the thanks button here on YouTube. But of course, I'm Rafael Di Furia. Stay safe and healthy out there, and I will see you all next time. Later. Later.